The importance of literacy in our fast-paced, technology-laden society hardly needs an explanation. Even small increases boost economic prospects for individuals and the economy as a whole. A recent report entitled Closing the Numeracy Gap argues the same is true where numbers are concerned, suggesting that everything from wages to GDP benefit from even modest advances in number skills. Here to explain is one of the authors of that report, Emily Sanford Brown, professor in the Pilon School of Business at Sheridan College, Mississauga campus, and it's good to meet you and have you here at TVO tonight. Very nice to meet you, Steve. Everyone knows what math is, but is numeracy something different? Uh, numeracy is something similar. So okay. there's numeracy and then there's math. Uh, numeracy requires those basic math knowledge and skills. They are applied to everyday things that we do, and they are applied to concrete and real life circumstances. So you can have math skills and numeracy skills, and sometimes you only have math skills, but not numeracy skills. Hello, I know what that's all about. <laughs> uh, why is numeracy important? It's important for many reasons. One you just uh, outlined was the economic benefit. So uh, it's uh, commonly evidence that if you have higher numeracy skills, you're likely a higher wage earner, there's more opportunities for you. Um, also, because uh, it helps you to go on to other things in your career, you may want advanced learning. That uh, focused math skills may not be necessary if you're not going into engineering, for example, but you still need numeracy skills to go into marketing, health sciences, and so on. So. I found you need it for reporting as well. Back in the days trying to figure out the mill rate and what people's property taxes were going to be and all that. Good, good right. to know a little math. Yep. Taxation and, and uh, your mortgage. What happens if my interest rate goes up a half a percent? What's yeah. going to happen to my monthly uh, payment and so on? So, yeah, it's very important. Where did you develop an interest for this? Well, I am a teacher who was uh, licensed in Calgary. I taught in Calgary as a math science uh, specialist for five years there. And I really found that math sparked my interest, that uh, it was often the subject that students hated the most. And I tried to make it fascinating and exciting for them. I tried to em embed it in their other learning. Uh, we did a lot linked with our science uh, curriculum. And it just kind of followed from there. And then I did a master's in math education, uh, specifically looking at what uh, math teachers need to know to be effective math teachers. So that was the focus. And from there, it just uh, just burgeoned into what is wrong with math in Ontario and uh, what are the issues we're facing here. Let's also just understand, because you say your report aggregates the outcomes of various different reports. What does that mean? It does. So uh, as much as we have our own research from the College Student Achievement Project that uh, evidences some l skills in numeracy, uh, we also then drew together and synthesized reports from uh, the OECD, PISA, which looks at um, numeracy and literacy skills of, of adults and young people, and also PISA, and then our own local um, standardized test, uh, the EQAO test. So we looked at all of the different metrics, and we pulled all the information together, and it seemed to be, it, it reports a very grim picture so for numeracy. So this is a, a very broad consultation, in other words. It is a very broad consultation, okay. yes. Here are some of the key findings here, which we'll put up on the screen and share with our viewers. You discovered that more than half of Canadians now are scoring below the level required for full participation in a modern technological society. You discovered more than one-third of all students taking mathematics are at risk of not completing their college programs because of weakness in numeracy. You discovered Ontario numeracy scores measured by PISA, you just referred to it, the Program for International Student Assessment, have steadily declined from 2003 to 2012. And one more, you discovered over the past five years, provincial assessments have shown a steady increase in reading and writing achievement, but a decrease in mathematics at the primary, that's grade three, and junior, grade six divisions. How troubling is all of that? It is very troubling because what we see at the end when we have you know, our reported higher graduation rates for secondary school is that those same students aren't really having an increase in numeracy skills, so um, they are failing out in masses from programs that require mathematics, even at a moderate level, and um, they're really, you know, challenged in their basic numeracy skills every day. But the reading and writing is going up, so that's the some reading good news. and writing marginally, yeah. Marginally, you're not marginally. you're not too impressed. Well, um, the research work that uh, that College Student Achievement Project worked on, originally it was College Math Project, and it only looked at math scores. 
And then uh, we were asked to incorporate a, a look at literacy skills. And in fact, the literacy uh, research from the CSAP project also indicated that a third of students uh, are at risk of failing their programs because of lack of literacy skills. Hmm. So it's not a great story there either. There, I, I mean, I think it's fair to say, I think the province has been more fixated on getting the literacy scores mm -hmm. up and mm -hmm. putting the accent there. And we just saw, I guess, uh, Education Minister Liz Sandals just uh, not too long ago made a new announcement about math and an injection of more money mm -hmm. to teach math better, because I guess they are, what, belatedly coming to the realization that math is not doing well? Yes, well, in uh, early in 2014, the ministry announced a $7 million infusion of, of funds for um, teacher professional development. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're now looking at just barely over two years uh, later, and they're putting $60 million in. But it really is short shrift to really the, the addressing the whole issue. It's, it's not simply uh, an hour of math instruction is better than 40 minutes of math instruction. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not what and how long, it's how it's taught. Um, it's engaging students in that learning. And in fact, it's broader than that. It's really addressing um, the idea that numeracy is not important. In society, people have a view that if you're illiterate, it's a terrible thing and you must become literate and there are support programs. People at any cocktail party will talk to me and I'll say, well, I teach mathematics. And they say, oh, I was never good at math and my kids aren't good at math. And they really are not embarrassed to say that. And, and truly, it should be as shameful as being illiterate. Well, let me, okay. I'm gonna say something heretical and then you can tell me why I'm an idiot <laughs> okay. for saying this. Oof, shall I say it to a math professor? Yes, I'm gonna say it anyway. You can get by in society knowing how to read and write mm -hmm. well, but not having math. You can't get by in society if you can't read or write well and you don't have math. Fair or not fair? Uh, I would suggest that that's incorrect. And I don't think people understand how much math they really do use in a day, that they don't really connect to numeracy skills. So. Today you left home and you said, well, I've got to get to work at nine o'clock, so I need to catch this train or I need to get on the highway by this time. It'll take me 40 minutes. That's mathematics, that's numeracy skills. That tells you something about what time of day you need to leave to get to work. You go out and you do grocery shopping. You say, oh, I just need to pick up a few things. I want to pay cash. Will this $20 cover these items? Those are your numeracy skills. So I think you underestimate how often your numeracy skills are put into play. Well, let me put one of your conclusions to you right mm -hmm. now, because you're obviously a college professor, and you can tell me whether this rings true in your mm -hmm. world. One of your conclusions, more than one third of all students taking mathematics are at risk of not completing their college programs mm -hmm. because of weakness in numeracy. Is that your experience? That is the evidence, the research from the College Student Achievement Project. So the research was collected over a period of nine years. Uh, what we looked at there was every student, we followed every student through their high school pathway, so what courses they took in grade 10, 11, 12, and so on. Then we followed them through first semester math courses, and then later on in the research, second semester math courses. And we looked at uh, how the pathway impacted their success, how their grade impacted their success. So if a prerequisite was a certain math course at 60% or 70% or 80%, how did the success uh, of the student going forward, how was that impacted by their grade in secondary school? But the research over those nine years indicated across the board that a third of students were at risk of failing their college programs because of, of math uh, gaps. Well, uh, you know, th this is a terrible place to make a confession because mm -hmm. there may actually be a couple of people watching this. Yes. But I went online and I took uh -huh. that sample test, mm -hmm. 60 questions. Mm -hmm. They started out pretty easily, mm -hmm. which gave me a false sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. I'm a reasonably bright guy, reasonably bright. Yes. Can I see your report? <laughs> I was going to say, take a guess at what I got. 62%? Um, no. Hmm. I got 43% on a math test yes. that, hmm. that, I'm telling you, quizzed me on some stuff mm -hmm. that I haven't done in 35 years, mm -hmm. right? Like the algebra and the trig and the, trig and the yeah. what's the other stuff, calculus. Mm -hmm. I hadn't done that since high school. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty out of 
pretty out of practice on that. Right. But still, do, do I really need to know all that in order to be a functioning, contributing member of society? Well, um, the math assessment that we developed for the college system actually addressed only foundational skills, so only up to grade eight. So basic algebra was as high a level of mathematics as we went to. I think to. I did okay on all that. Up till that point, right. I think I was okay. Yeah. After that, it was hopeless. And uh, in field testing over 10,000 students in Ontario in grade 11, 12, and first semester college, uh, half of the students um, failed the test. Yeah, half the students failed the test. But you so. know what? Now, having now done the test, mm -hmm. I would say, you know what? The, the, those half, they, not, they may, not, may not be that dumb. It may not, you know, mm -hmm. it, because I don't think I'm dumb and I flunked the test. And I think part of the uh, issue with uh, the, the students and not doing well on that assessment was students are very um, used to having a calculator. And this assessment for the college system was designed specifically for use without a calculator because there are still programs, many programs in the college system that uh, do not have students utilize a calculator, especially in you know, paramedic and healthcare. You know, you're working in a hospital and you don't have time to pull out your phone or your calculator. You need to do some quick calculations yep. and dosages and so on. So um, that assessment was designed to be used without a calculator. And I think, um, firstly, you know, there are issues of demotivating a student. What do you mean I can't use a calculator? What do you mean I can only have a pencil and paper beside me? So there are those issues we're also, you know, combating, I guess, as well. You made me feel very humble having done this <laughs> test. It was really quite a shock. But I'm going to infer that the results that you have been getting from doing all this testing are not what you hope to see. Suboptimal, we can put it that way. Yes. In which case, are, are there efforts underway in the uh, elementary and secondary years to try to address this? Well, in fact, this was a college-led project. So we worked with 24 colleges, but we did field test with students who were going to college. So we did the grade 11 and 12 students in uh, all the school boards in Ontario. Um, so we're, we are seeing a, a level of cooperation, and certainly I gave presentations to uh, secondary school math teachers about our findings. Um, they're not surprised about it either. They see it. Yes, they do, of course. And uh, they they work really hard to try and stem those gaps. But uh, a lot of the skills that the students are missing, and, and I see it in teaching calculus, sometimes it's not the calculus that's the, the hurdle. It's the adding fractions with different denominators. Mm -hmm. It's it's all of those skills that you, uh, you are meant to have from grade five, six, seven, eight. So um, there does need to be a look back. So we're looking at more of a cooperation between all levels of, of uh, education um, to really help stem the tide. Were you getting funding from uh, the Ministry of Training, Colleges and Universities to do this? Uh, not the research paper, the numeracy gap paper, but for the College Student Achievement Project research, it was co-funded by the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Training, Colleges and Universities, as was the assessment development. And is Training, Colleges and Universities continuing to fund your work? They are not, no. Why not? Um, so there was uh, one person who was at MTCU who was very supportive and uh, of the project. Uh, the project initially, the scope was to develop uh, an assessment, which we did. Mm -hmm. And so the mandate of the ministry is, has ended, and now the implementation has really been left up to the colleges. So the college system uh, has had to take it up, and currently it's in process at Humber College. They've sort of picked up the torch and run with it. And we hope then that colleges will, uh, will choose to implement it college system-wide. A big question at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Literacy, okay. Numeracy, not very good. Mm -hmm. How do we close that gap? Well, it uh, really is multifaceted. And uh, we're not you know, sitting here as authors and researchers blaming any one uh, area. So what we are looking at really is a, a numeracy round table where um, all stakeholders come together. So we're going to have people from industry, people from elementary system, secondary, post-secondary, come together and advise uh, from their experience. What we're looking at really is um, from the elementary school system. So we have teachers who are working really hard, but perhaps may not enjoy or be confident in mathematics. So, so we've got to train the teachers better. Uh, in fact, there's a cheaper way we could do it with teachers who are already in service, and that's as simple as teacher deployment. So when I taught in Calgary, I taught in a school, uh, Calgary Science School, now Connect Charter, where 
Uh, I taught 50 students math and science, and my partner taught the same 50 students humanities. So when a grade four student came to the class for science or math, they knew it was someone who loved math, who was confident, who was excited about it, who could energize that curriculum. Uh, and so we, we can do that simply and easily here in Ontario as well by simply deploying teachers wisely. We already have them. Because that makes abundant sense, does that mm. mean it will never happen? It might not happen, but it's, it's, the cheap, it's a cheap option for in-service teachers. Secondary school, again, uh, oh, and the EQAO uh, surveys teachers about their experience. And in fact, 80% uh, of elementary teachers completed the survey saying that uh, they did not have any post-secondary mathematics instruction. Hmm. So that's disconcerting when those teachers are asked to teach up to grade eight mathematics. You know, we're really putting them at a disadvantage. Uh, and they try their best. Secondary school, uh, I addressed that already. We've got a, a plethora of secondary school math courses which really aren't serving the purposes of uh, higher ed anymore or uh, going out into the workplace. We need to really look at the options. They, they can't be destination based anymore. And then we need to look at teacher education. Um, currently, the uh, numeracy skills of Quebec students are far higher than Ontario and their teacher candidates have 222 hours of uh, math pedagogy, math instruction in their teacher preparation program. In Ontario, by contrast, 30. Hmm. So we have students who come in, they're fearful of, of mathematics, they, they're going to be teaching mathematics, and we, we only give them 30 hours of instruction to learn perhaps learn the math, but also learn how to teach it effectively to students. So. So if we do what you recommend, mm -hmm. how long do you think it'll take to close the gap between literacy and numeracy? Well, teacher education could be an entire generation, but this round table I think is important. I think we need to um, come together. We, we can't, the Ministry of Education can't in isolation make changes that impact higher ed and in impact mm -hmm. teacher education and impact the attitude towards numeracy. We really have to do that as a concerted effort. So that's the first thing that we're, we're suggesting that's imperative. As long as we're talking, you know, math and shapes and perimeter and all that business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how come it's always a round table and never a square table or a triangular table? Well, it's just like Arthur. The round table means no one's in charge. We're at equal oh, level. There so you go. you're at the head of the table, you are the, the host. And uh, I guess I am at the head of the table. Yeah. Never occurred so to me. Round really does eliminate that uh, idea of someone in charge. Sheldon, when we redesign, we need to bevel <laughs> the edges of this table here so that we don't get the sense that I'm somehow in charge. Because as the guests point out all the time, I'm not. Uh, Emily, it's great to meet you. you Thanks too. very much for this, and we appreciate. Uh, our need to be a more numerate society, and I'm going to work on my fractions, algebra, trigonometry, calculus, et cetera, et cetera, so I don't embarrass myself so badly in the days and years to come. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate your, uh, your putting this important issue up. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.